On iOS 15, I can long press on any image or video and then use a second finger to swipe out of the app, open another one, and let go of the file to transfer it over. Works with any text, images, zip files, audio, videos, the whole shebang. Androids don't really have this feature. I mean, some allow you to copy and transfer text within the Recents menu, but that's it. Now with Android 13, there's also an excellent feature where I can long press on any notification and drag it to open it into split screen with whatever app I'm currently using. It brings up conversations a lot faster without needing to leave the app I'm currently on. iPhones don't even support split screen, only iPads do. And there's a lot more differences where that came from when comparing these two monster updates. It's a showdown between iOS 15.5 and Android 13. Now Android 13 isn't finished yet, it's only just reached beta 1 and has a few more betas to go before it's fully stable, but it still wouldn't hurt to see what each software has to offer. I feel like we can learn a lot by comparing the two. We'll discover what features iOS 15.5 released that Android doesn't have, and vice versa, and we'll see which features were copied from one another. Now these updates are massive and have hundreds of changes, so I won't be able to compare everything, but it's still going to be a very detailed comparison. Plus, with iOS 16 around the corner, I'll be sure to compare it against a more stable Android 13 version only if there's enough interest. So if you want that future comparison, please be sure to drop a thumbs up and comment down below to let me know. Now Android 13 doesn't look like it's going to be such a crazy update as Android 12 was. I mean, I could be wrong, but Android 12 set the bar up really high. It completely changed the entire UI and introduced a new design language known as Material U. I even compared it against iOS a few months back. I'll drop that video in the cards if you want to watch it later. Now it's looking like Android 13 is more like a touch-up. It's improved the interface a bit, included some tiny new changes here and there, and improved the Material U theming. Nothing out of the ordinary. iOS 15 has also been doing the same thing. It's focused on improving the functionality of its UI and apps, and just trying to make its software a more pleasant experience. Still, there are many valuable features that Apple introduced with iOS 15. For example, a handy feature that I wish Androids had is that within the settings, your iPhone will let you know if it's gone through any type of service. Whether the battery has been replaced or if the camera got fixed, it's just like a Carfax when you shop for used vehicles. Um, and the best part is that iOS will let you know if it's a genuine Apple part and not just a third party one. It's gonna make shopping for used iPhones a lot more reliable. This next exclusive iOS feature is very revolutionary because if you're in the right state, you can actually digitalize your driver's license or state ID with an Apple wallet. And then you can even use it at the airport when dealing with TSA. It's next level. As of now, Arizona and Georgia are the only two states that support this, but Apple has confirmed that a few other states are soon to arrive. I'm guessing that Android will jump on this bandwagon soon in a few years, but I mean, it's a really cool feature that iOS already has. If you live in the EU, Apple even lets you carry a digital version of your vaccination records within the Health app. Perfect for verifying your COVID-19 vaccine. It shows the dates you received the shot, what type of shot it was, your name, and a QR code to bring up the official certificate. Extremely handy. Another helpful feature that I would have never thought of is that iOS now allows you to have trusted contacts, or legacy contacts as they call it, who can access and download your data if you end up dying. <laughs> it's a harsh reality that we all need to face, but it's still something that happens in life, so staying prepared is always good, especially for your loved ones. If anyone adds you as a legacy contact, you won't need to know their phone's passcode to get their data. Instead, you'll need an access key, which is given to you when you were set as a legacy contact, and a copy of their death certificate. Android has nothing of this sort. Another harsh reality is that giving anyone your personal email could end up bringing you a ton of spam. Luckily, if you have an iPhone, you can use a feature called Hide My Email, which lets you create a fake email address that forwards to your inbox. It's perfect when signing up for newsletters or creating new accounts, because if they start randomly spamming you, you can just burn that fake address to stop them. It saves you the hassle of needing to jump through hoops to just to unsubscribe. Android does not have this feature at all, but you can download an app like Simple Login to do the same thing. On another note, Android is still far ahead of iOS when it comes to notifications. Still, there's a unique feature that iOS 15 released called Scheduled Summary, and it's something that I wish Android supported because it helps lower unimportant notifications. It lets you choose the unimportant apps that you don't want to get notified by right away, 
and you can schedule all their incoming notifications for a later time. That way you don't get hundreds of beings a day from random apps. There's also a new tool tied with Do Not Disturb mode called Focus, which also helps you stop distractions by silencing every notification, except for the apps or contacts that you choose to allow. You can even choose to hide home screen pages, which is crazy um, if you find some of them to be distracting. The best part is that you can enable different profiles depending on your location, time, or an app you open. It's brilliant and way more powerful than Android's Do Not Disturb mode. iMessage is also brilliant and something that I'm extremely jealous of, um, especially since I live in the States. iOS 15 improved it even further with features that Android Messages doesn't have. For example, whenever you receive or send a large number of pictures, iMessage stacks them so that you don't have to scroll through a long list. Why can't Andrew do this? And whenever a friend sends you a photo, article, or link, they'll also appear with the relevant app in a section called Shared With You. Makes it easier to keep track of the music or articles that your friends share whenever you open Apple Music or Safari. Plus, I love that you can pin messages that are links to find them much more quickly later on if you jump out of the conversation. Here's a cool one. If you put your MacBook and iPad next to each other and simply drag your cursor over to the next screen, you'll be able to control your iPad without needing to do anything else. It's like magic. Here's the best part though. You can even transfer files by just clicking and dragging them to the other screen. It's crazy and futuristic. Of course, Android doesn't have anything like this. Stock weather apps on Android are also not that great. There are a few exceptions like Samsung's weather app, but it's still not as good as what Apple now provides. And that's because they bought out the famous Dark Sky weather app and have basically copied over a lot of its powerful features and design. It's got a great looking interface that's easy to use, all your weather information is on one page, and it even comes with a map to let you visually see the temperatures and weather conditions around the country. There aren't that many weather apps that can do this. A few other advantages with iOS 15.5 are that it supports ProRes for videos if you have an iPhone 13 Pro or Pro Max. If your child owns an iPhone, the processor can now detect if an inappropriate photo is on the screen to blur it out and alert them that they should tell their parents. That's pretty cool. And the Find My app can detect and alert you if a detractable device like an AirTag or AirPods that isn't yours is following you around. A fantastic security feature. There are a lot more unique features that iOS provides and Android doesn't, but there are also many features that iOS copied over from Android. But before showing off those features, keeping your phone protected is just as important as updating its software. So I wanted to introduce you guys to an amazing Toras reusable Snapio screen protector, which is different from any ordinary screen protector. First off, applying a screen protector can be a difficult process, especially if no kit is provided. You'll usually end up with ugly bubbles that never go away. That's not the case with Toras's screen protector. Torres includes a kit that makes it easy to apply without any issues. And it can exhaust the air quickly so that it applies easily with no bubbles. On top of that, with the Snapio screen protector, you can ensure that your iPhone's display won't ever get damaged or cracked after a painful drop. Their screen protectors are so strong that not even a knife can puncture them. You can even reuse it if you like. For example, if you accidentally drop your phone and the screen protector gets dirty, you can simply wash it with water, dry it, use a Snappy old mate to repair the adhesive, and reapply it. It can save you the money and hassle of needing to go out and get another screen protector. Isn't that amazing? For that extra protection, Torres even sells shockproof cases, which gave me that extra confidence when using the phone over concrete or asphalt. So go check out Torres's products through the links in the description, and I'll even include a discount code so that you can pick up a screen protector for even cheaper. Anyways, back to iOS 15, there's a new feature called Live Text, which basically uses your camera to scan text on a piece of paper, a sign, or anything in front of you to put it onto the text field. Plus, if there's a number or an email on the paper, you can even take further actions like contacting that person. And you can even translate text. If any of this sounds familiar to you, it's because Google Lens Array does all of this and more. When iOS 15.2 got released, Apple implemented a new security feature called App Privacy Report, which lets you know which apps are accessing your data and permissions. This includes your camera, microphone, location, etc. It also lets you know which apps are accessing the internet and what domains they're connecting to. 
Well, Android did it first with a menu called Privacy Dashboard, which also allows you to see a full history of all the apps that are using your location, camera, microphone, etc. Apple just takes it a step further by also showing you the app network activity. On top of that, just like Android, you can even rapidly press the side buttons five times to start a countdown, which ends up calling the emergency services when it ends. Apple also brought over Private Relay, which works similarly to a VPN, since every time you browse a Safari, your internet traffic gets encrypted and no one can see what you're browsing. Not even Apple. It's only available if you're part of Apple's iCloud Plus service. Well, on the flip side, Google also provides a VPN for its one subscribers. It literally does the same thing. There are also a few new extra features found within Safari, Siri, and FaceTime that have been copied over from Android, but I already went over them in the last iOS comparison, so if you'd like to learn a little bit more about them, click that eye in the top right corner. With that said, let's switch it over to the Android side and discuss every new feature found within Android 13 that iOS 15.5 doesn't have. The first is that within the quick settings of Android 13, there's a new tile called security and privacy, which combines the camera, microphone, and location tiles all into one section. So now you can block all those sensors in one spot. Very useful if you're afraid that your phone is spying on you. iOS unfortunately doesn't let you block the camera or microphone on a system level, so best of luck. On top of that, Android 13 lets you control the vibration intensity, not just for the system ringer, notification, or touch feedback, but also for your alarms and media now. It comes in handy if you're in a class and your phone's vibration is still too loud. Trust me, during midterms or finals week, you need this because if your phone has a loud vibration and it rings during an exam, everyone will for sure hear it. On iOS, you can change the vibration pattern to something unique, but it doesn't let you control its intensity. On Android 13, whenever a background app is draining your battery excessively, you'll get alerted so that you can take action and stop it. I don't need to clarify how useful this can be, especially if you have sketchy or old apps installed. On top of that, within the quick settings, you can stop apps that are constantly running in the background like a VPN. iOS doesn't have anything like this, but they do already have great background restrictions, so I honestly don't mind whenever I use an iPhone. Whenever you copy text, Android 13 now brings up an overlay just like a screenshot does to let you edit the copy text or even open the appropriate app comes in handy if you want to quickly order an Uber whenever someone sends you an address, or instantly message a number that you just received. Plus, every time you do copy something, no matter if it's a text, a link, or an image, the clipboard will be automatically cleared after an hour so that the apps you have installed can't read your clipboard at a later time. It's something that iOS should definitely consider doing. If you've always wanted to change the language on a per app basis, Android has your back or at least it did with the previous version of Android 13. For example, if you wanted Amazon to be in Spanish, but leave every other app in English, you could do that. It worked like a charm, but as a beta one, it's been removed. Not sure why, since it was working like a charm and it was great, but there is some speculation that it could come back, so I decided to include it anyways, just in case. I've said it before and I'll say it again, Google's new design language called Material U is just way more exciting and fun to play around with than what iOS provides. You have wallpaper-based themes where some of your apps, buttons, settings, and random screens can match the colors of your chosen background. Plus, there are a ton more amazing animations and design changes that have made the UI look incredible. Now, Android 13 has improved that even further. For instance, the media player now has a neat squiggle for the seek bar which moves and extends when you play music. And then it strands out when you pause it. It's pretty cool. Within the wallpaper and style section, there are a ton more distinct colors to choose from. And finally, there are even rumors that themed icons will extend to other third-party apps, not just Google ones. That way, your home screen can have a uniform theme. It's such a whole different environment from iOS. And thank God, because before Android 12 came along, I was starting to feel like Android's interface was starting to feel a bit outdated and dull. Now it's the complete opposite, where iOS is the more dull one, and Android 13 has solidified the 4 even more. We'll have to see if iOS 16 pushes out a bigger response. As far as the features that Android may have copied over from iOS, I could only spot out a few. For the longest, iOS has always allowed you to choose whether an app could send you notifications or not. While Android allowed any app to start sending you notifications right away out the gate. Kind of annoying since you'd receive a ton of random spam until you turn them off individually. Now, Android 13 has done what Apple has done and made notifications an opt-in process. 
thank goodness. On top of that, just like iOS, some Androids like the Pixels have implemented a double tap back gesture called Quick Tap. So you can essentially take a screenshot, access Google Assistant or more by just double tapping the back of the phone. The only thing missing was the flashlight though. But now with Android 13, it's finally here. Android 13 also came with a new QR code within the quick settings to let me quickly pull up the camera anytime I needed to scan a code. iOS has already had this within its control center. And even though it's not available yet, there are strong rumors that Google could even end up using a new photo picker that's very similar to Apple's file selection menu. It's a dedicated view that apps can now use to let you only select photos instead of bringing up the document picker that we're used to. Another rumor is that Android 13 could let you finally control the LED brightness instead of just toggling it on or off. It's something that iPhones have always had and a few OEMs have implemented it within their phones like Samsung, but it's not a universal thing on Android. So I'm still super stoked about that. Overall, both platforms have come a long way and it's pretty obvious that each latest update was just a touch up. iOS 15 is a clean up to the massive iOS 14 update and Android 13 is a touch up to the massive Android 12 update. Of course, there's still a lot more potential for Android 13 since it's barely in its early stages, but in a few more months, we'll get a more solidified idea about how this update will turn out. And once iOS 16 arrives, it'll be interesting to see how it stacks up with Android 13. So again, if you really want that comparison in the future, a quick thumbs up will motivate me to do it. Anyways, that's a detailed comparison of iOS 15.5 and Android 13 Beta 1. If you guys enjoyed what you saw and learned a thing or two, a quick thumbs up would really go a long way to helping this video get noticed by the YouTube algorithm. On top of that, you should get subscribed with the notification bell turned on so that you always know exactly when future videos arrive and for the iOS and Android comparison video in the future. It'll be very informative and spectacular. Either way, thank you for tuning in and I'll catch you in the next one. Kapow!